back. The All Progressives Congress in 2015 achieved a feat that no other party uh, has been able to achieve when its uh, then presidential candidate, Muhammadu Buhari, defeated incumbent President Goodluck Jonathan of the People's Democratic Party at the poll. Yeah, but since then, the APC has been struggling to remain united, bedeviled with different challenges, mostly internal. A crisis that have threatened to tear it apart. The strength it demonstrates or demonstrated in defeating the PDP in 2015 has now become its weakness as the different blocs that formed the APC in 2013 constantly fight for control of the soul of the party. Now the internal wranglings became more prominent in recent times. It marred the party's congresses at the ward and state levels and eventually led to the breakaway of the NPDP bloc now known as the reformed PDP one way or the other, depending on how you want reformed to see it. APC. You re 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 sorry, reformed <laughs> APC. <laughs> yes, indeed. And, and with the 2019 elections inching closer, reports say as many as 30 senators, 70 House of Reps uh, members, and some state governors will exit the party soon. Now, this is despite the reconciliatory moves of uh, APC's national leader, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and please, uh, from the party's new national chairman, uh, Adam Soshomole, mm -hmm. Will the party be able to resolve contentious issues and appease aggrieved members? Or is this the beginning of the end for the APC? Like they say, now that we found love, what are we going to do with it? Have is you that sang that song some time ago? Is that what the APC has not been able to... Uh, now that we found <laughs> love, what, what are we, we going to do with, with it? it? It's, look, it's... <laughs> Look, don't mind us. It's not a singing session. But we have in the studio a former governorship candidate in River State and the current DG, that's the Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency in Massa, Dr. Dakuku Pitaside. Good to see you. Good morning. Good, good to morning, see you, Doctor. <laughs> nice to see you. And good morning to you. Were, I were, love you that song. were you tempted to join us in the song? Oh. You, just, you just guessed. You just took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We'll try to organize an, either an, an, an a, ca a cappella group or an orchestra <laughs> at the end of things. But let's talk about national issues yes. right now. It's good to have you join us, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Now, a lot of Nigerians have been making comments and reactions to the developments in APC where it seemed that its biggest challenge is, is even from within. Now, let me start from 20. Uh, uh, 14, 2015, the build up to 2015 mm. election, where different groups and different political parties came together to merge. All Nigerians felt that that was a new, new bride for the country, but it seemed not to be so with the developments going on now. Are we seeing a repeat of 2014 to 2015 towards the 2019 election? Not quite. Okay. We are not seeing a repeat of 2014, 2015. The scenarios are different. All right. There are three principal reasons why the centripetal forces against the dead government were able to come together and triumph over the party in government then. Mm -hmm. One is that that government was not only marked by corruption, corruption was endemic. And the people had tolerated corruption enough or corruption by the elite who are controlling the government. And they had their food, they just couldn't tolerate it any longer. Mm. The second thing is that government lost its purpose and focus. Development was not on the table. We had lost the whole of the Northeast. Security, insecurity was threatening our country. The people felt unsafe, insecure, and they needed to do something. And that thing they needed to do was to change their government. That government had lost purpose and focus. The third one is that the economy was at its lowest ebb. The manifestation is what we are seeing today. We're almost at the verge of Nigerians eating from the dustbin. And the government didn't seem to have a plan of how to redeem the situation. These three forces coalesced together to accelerate the exit of that government. Now, if you look at the scenario today, we cannot say corruption was at the same level, or is at the same level as it was in 2015. So you take the issue of corruption out. Government 
clearly seems to have purpose and focus. And so we cannot say government is ruderless or directionless today. President Mohamed Buhari has been able to stabilize the system. Nobody can take away that from him. President Mohamed Buhari is clear of where he wants to take government to. He acknowledges the fact that insecurity is a challenge. Mm -hmm. That development has been stunted, I won't say stalled over a very long time. That we need to accelerate development. And the indicators are there that we're performing well. Is, the, is it in terms of roads? Is it in the area of power? We acknowledge that that same issue of insecurity is there. It may have taken a new dimension. Mm -hmm. So of the three elements that actually played a key role in the exit of the former government, two are no longer there. One seems to be there, but in a different, um, in a different coloration. But again, it is clear to the Nigerian people that government appreciates that there is a challenge of insecurity that needs to be dealt with. Government has shown some proactive disposition to dealing with the issue of insecurity. Like what? Because there are many Nigerians who would say to you that the three areas that you have just pointed out, that those same uh, situations exist now, if not in a more uh, troubling... Humongous dimension. Uh, yeah, in a more humongous uh, dimension. And then again, you, you now have this crisis in the party. And people are saying, look, all, all of these problems within the APC uh, seem to be a distraction from actually delivering on good governance for, for the people of Nigeria, whether it's on the front of security, even the corruption that you talk about. Uh, a global um, a body uh, like the World Bank, uh, the IMF, have said within this administration, corruption continues like it did in the past. Well, I, I want us to put it in perspective. Yeah. Government and development is on one side. Party is another issue. Mm -hmm. You can't hold President Buhari, he's, he's leader of the party, you can't hold him responsible for internal crisis in the party. But what i like us to understand is that the, what you see as internal crisis in a party is part of the evolutionary process of the formation and bonding of the party. Mind you, APC came together as a party only in 2013, 2014. Mm. And so it's still evolving. Unlike PDP that have been around for at least 17, 18, 19 years. It's still evolving. So it's not in the strictest sense, strictly speaking, an issue of internal crisis. It's part of the evolutionary process. And the leaders of APC acknowledge as a fact that this evolutionary process needs to take place for us to stabilize and play the role of driving change and development in our society. Dr. Now, if you talk about internal crisis. What do you think is internal crisis? Could I call an evolutionary process? The indicators show that despite what you call internal crisis and what I call evolution of the party, mm. the party is still doing well. There's the prediction that we can't hold a successful convention. We've gone through that turbulence. We had a successful convention. We have a new party executive today. The second one is that the prophets of doom predicted that we are dead on arrival in Ikiti. The mm. party went on to win the Ikiti elections. And yeah. number three is that they, are, they also predicted that we have no chance in Osho. I can tell you this. You can take it to the bank. We're still going to win in Osho. So the Nigerian people, despite the challenges we are facing, believes that APC is still the best alternative for now, or the best option for now, pending when other political forces might just drop something new. Like the PDP is a no-go area for them. Okay, let, let's, let, let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. you, you, you talk about an evolution of the APC as it were. Some of the members of the APC now are people who have, were very active in the, in the Second Republic, people who were very active, who knew politics and all of that in the, in the uh, Third Republic, mm -hmm. and even on, from 1999, until it's now, indeed. many of these people were even in the, in the PDP you mentioned before they moved over. So when it comes to the issue of an evolution, what does it really take for a party or politicians, because a party is made up of politicians who are, who are very experienced, to come together to agree on, 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 what, on how to move the country forward, especially when they have identified mistakes made by their own party, some mm. of them who were mm. members in of the, the party, mm. and they feel, okay, we have to move forward. What does it take? All right, thank you very much. Yeah. I'll give you an analogy. Mm. That analogy will help you understand the point I'm going to make. Okay. 
If you take a Nigerian, keep him on the streets of Lagos, move that same Nigerian to the streets of London or New York or Washington, he will be behave differently. Mm -hmm. Why is it so? Tell us. You, you tell <laughs> us. I'll take you to that point. And so if you have a Nigerian who is a member of the PDP, he will behave in a distinct manner from when you take him to the APC. Hmm. There are two major reasons for it. All right. One is the issue of the environment. The second one is the issue of the policy framework or the philosophy or the ideas behind the formation of a party. Once you get to a group, there are group norms. You conform to the group norms or you're shown the way out. If you are a member of the APC, you know first that it's a party for the progressives. You know that part of the pillars of our party is that we abhor corruption. Yeah. You know the guiding philosophy of the party. And so once you get to the party, it's either you conform or you, you show yourself the way out. Not that you'll be shown the way out. The same philosophy that guides a Nigerian who will behave differently from the streets of Lagos as he will behave in the streets of London. Now, the environment will be hostile to certain traits, certain qualities, or certain characters, or uh, for you to exhibit certain behavior. Are you saying that that is at the core of this um, uh, storm that you have within the APC now? That the environment um, where corruption is aboard, indiscipline, if you like, all manner of things that the PDP stood for, that you say that the APC has zero tolerance for, that that is why uh, people like Atiku have left the party, that is why Samuel Otom, a governor of uh, Benue State, an APC governor who has said he's been given the red card, and uh, you have these uh, Shehu Sanis of this world leaving the party in spite of the fact that a new sheriff is in town. Senator Nyaku uh, in yeah, Adamawa and the others. In Adamawa has, has, has left yeah. too, and many more defections. All right, thank yes. you very much. You need to get your information right. Okay. You're in the business of information. That's what we do, yes. As I speak to you, Otom is not a member of any other political party. Mm. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, you're Shani, correct. Not, not Senator at least Shani, for now. Sani is my friend. I can say that. Okay. He has issued a statement that he has not left APC. I'm not saying people are not leaving or people are not coming in. It is part of the political dynamics. That if a party do not serve your ultimate interest, it's a two-dimensional thing. For some persons, their own interest comes first. For others, the interest of the society comes first. So depending on uh, which perspective you're seeing things from, if you allow your own personal interest be the key driver of your politics, then you can't cohabit with those who are championing the interests of society first. So these are dimensions, these are things, dynamics playing out. So depending on what is driving me, is it that I want to see a society that is stable, secure, peaceful, pro uh, making progress? Is that what I want to see? Or do I want the politics that serve my interest and that of my family? That would detect what I would do. But when you look I at some of, when you look at some of the- for some of the, our ex-vice president, former yes. vice president, mm -hmm. Elijah Tiku, I wouldn't know what is driving his politics. But you may have noticed that for some time, he gets to a party, he's not given an opportunity to run presidential election, he will leave and move to the next party. And so none of us can predict, we can't say with certainty, this was driving his politics. But the instinct in me tells me that for as long as you don't give him opportunity to realize that ambition, not in the context of our collective interest, he won't be in that party. If in the PDP, they deny him the presidential ticket, I can predict that he will move to the next political party. But that's not a standard for us to measure. Some of those who have left the APC, some of, one of the allegations is that the country is more divided now than ever. That the, the, the APC is, is guilty, there any empirical that the, that study the to APC, back that? That the APC is guilty of the same uh, you know, situation that the PDP is accused of in terms of all the, all the many problems that made people leave the PDP, that they're seeing the same thing within the APC. I don't and so the APC does not represent what their ideals are anymore. Now, I don't agree with them. 
you, for you to appreciate where we are, you need to know where we are coming from. Mm. The economy was in bad shape, totally destroyed by the PDP. <clears throat> there was insecurity in the country that we inherited, and the government is fighting, doing everything humanly possible to address the issue of insecurity. The government is doing everything poss humanly possible to address the issue of the economy. And how do you blame us? These things were there. We have voted to solve the problems. And we didn't promise the Nigerian people that these problems will be fixed within 48 hours. Fixing problems is a process. And the process is on. I believe that Nigerian people are convinced that we have the right purpose, that we are driven by the right vision, and that we are patriotic and committed enough to fix the problems. All we ask for is time. Okay. When, when, when all Nigerians have been asked, or what leaders have been asking Nigerians for, it's time. I remember even the, the, all the, the, the PDP at the time asked Nigerians uh, to give us time. But certainly, we'll fix all the problems that the military had created for so many years. We'll fix them. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, it'd be handled overnight. When this presidency or this government came, this administration came on board, their promises were on three major things. And the president was consistent on the issue of corruption. When it comes to that, nobody had doubt as to his ability to handle it because... And his integrity. His integrity and, and, and the personality that he, you know, and the perception about him. Then the other area was security, which they also had very much confidence in him, and then the issue of economy. Now, three years down the line, <clears throat> some things, some signposting of activity or events have happened, and Nigerians feel that we are not... From the body language of the president, he's not been able to be decisive about the things he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. One, on the issue of corruption, we had the uh, Secretary to the Government of the Federation on one hand, at a time, there were allegations against him. Nigerians saw how long it took before he reacted. And even until now, Nigerians expected a real prosecution when it comes to that. The that NIA, the NIA and, and issue, all issue mm -hmm. is there. Keeping that aside, the issue of security, headsmen, whatever their, their name are called, from the issue of, from Benue to Taraba to Plateau to all of those states, mm -hmm. a lot of Nigerians feel the body language of the president doesn't suggest that he is decisive. Well, especially when you hear uh, uh, Governor Tom at the time said the federal government had abandoned the people. So when you see all of the signposting of, of events and here and there uh, from the body language of the president, how would you rate the performance? Because he said that the government has done so well. Now, in the era of corruption, mm. The president has cons been consistent that he's a stickler for the rule of the law, for rule of law. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? When allegations were leveled against the then-secretary of government, it would have been against the, the same principle the, the president stands for, the principle of rule of law, mm. for him to wake up and say, on the basis of allegation, I remove you from office and ask that you be prosecuted. Without anybody providing empirical evidence to support the allegation. When it got to a point, he mandated a committee led by the vice president to examine the issues yeah. and advise government. The vice president, vice president's committee, the Professor Sibanjo's committee, mm. looked at the issues, advised the government, who didn't have the opportunity of reading the advice of the committee led by the vice president. But the president took appropriate steps shoved the man from office and asked the anti-graft agencies to investigate the matter. The vice president's committee is an administrative committee. I don't know what else anybody has led the president to do. He has no power to wake up on his own and pick you up and drop you in jail. It's not part of his mandate. But the, 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 the SGF, the SGF, SGF is no decisive. longer... Yeah, but the SGF is no longer in office, no which, longer in so, office. which suggests that Maybe from the outcome of the administrative panel and all of that, some things were found, found against him. None of us can say that. But what I can tell you mm. is that the anti graft agencies are investigating him. And if there's need to prosecute him, they've got the courage to prosecute him. I'm in government, and I know that the presidency do not interfere with our processes. Okay. Now, if the yes. same thing for the NIA. Mm. There's no single case where the president interfered, where somebody is found guilty or culpable of corruption, and the president interface, no, don't prosecute him. And the president shields him. No single case like that. 
He's been forthright and consistent on his pursuit of anti-corruption agenda of the government. All right, let's even uh, stick with the issue of interference from Mr. President. Uh, a lot of people have criticized his uh, seeming aloofness when it comes to um, intervening in this, uh, you know, internal crisis of the APC as something that may just uh, hit, you know, the fan and uh, fall on everybody's face. Um, exactly um, wh wh what is your stance when it comes to the president getting more involved in uh, solving, you know, some of this uh, problems. Do you think he should be more involved or he should maintain uh, this uh, aloofness? The president is not the national chairman of the party. Mm -hmm. He's not a member of the national working committee of the party. He's the leader of the party. There's no dispute about that. It's only in situations where the formal structures of the party are not able to deal with the issues that the president can intervene as leader of the party. I don't think we've gotten mm. to that stage. Okay. Our problems are not intractable. Our problems are not such that cannot be resolved. You think that is why the APC continues to record winnings or wins, uh, victories, and the elections? AKT, an indicator AKT, you've done well. the fact okay, that let's people identify with let's go, let's go to Rivers. Rivers, your, your homestead. What is next uh, for you? Are you looking at uh, giving it another shot uh, uh, the, by the time you leave... Uh, Nemasa as DG, are you looking at running again for governorship of River State? I can say this. I say three important things. Mm. The first one is that I have a job right now, I have a mandate. Yeah. And that job is to put Nemasa on sound footing, make it the leading maritime administration in Africa, and advance Nigeria's maritime goals. That's the job I have at hand. The second thing is that I've always said that if there's one thing I know, as I can predict that night will follow the day and that day will follow the night, is that in 2019, the current government in River State will be history. There's a total disconnect between the current government and the people of River State. You're very sure. And that the River State people cannot wait to make this government history. And that, that date with history mm -hmm. is either before on the 29th of May, 2019. And that all the forces that believes in good development, progress, peace, unity, will coalesce together, will come together, galvanize themselves, and ensure that we keep a date with history on the 29th of May, 2019. And I'm going to be part of that team. The okay. third thing is that I've been consistent that whatever will be my next move will be made public very soon, and it will not exceed the early weeks of August, I will make my position clear whether I'm going to offer myself to run for the office of governor of River State or not. But one thing is clear to me, that the government in River State, led by Governor Yeson Wike, will be history on the 29th of May 2019. Okay, let, 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 me, let me come back. Let, let's dwell in your state, mm. in your home state, for instance. The APC is the opposition right now. Correct. And one expects that, as an opposition that wants to take power back from the ruling party in the state, will be very cohesive, will be very united, bonded mm. towards one purpose. But there seem to be rancor within the APC, mm. uh, uh, APC the as Amici, a party. The Am you see, uh, Amici and uh, or le some leaders of the party yeah. don't seem to agree very much. Well, I don't think that's very right. Okay. okay. There are a few things that are not in dispute. Who is the leader of the party in River State is not in dispute. But Senator Magnus Abe, myself, and other leaders of the party agree that our former governor and minister of transportation, the right on Ebuchimi Kerutimi Amechi, is leader of the party. I'm not sure that's in dispute. Mm. Two, what is not in dispute is that Ojukwe Flaga Makri is state chairman of the party. There are many tendencies in the party. These tendencies are built on a number of pillars. One is the fact that different persons have interest to put themselves forward for the office of governor. And so when they feel that their interest is not secured in that particular arrangement, they cry out loud. I have great respect for my friend and brother, Senator Magnus Abe, mm. but he's not a leader of faction in the APC. 
is leader okay. of his gubernatorial team. Mm. And there are other gubernatorial teams in the state. Well, so why does it feel, or why does it look like, from the reports we get, that he and uh, Rotimi Amici are, are, are in contention of mm -hmm. something, where supporters of Magnus Abbe sometimes come out to uh, 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 have conflict and fisticuff sometimes with uh, supporters of, of Rotimi Amici? That's not true. Okay. That's not true at all. They're in contention of what? Is Rotimi Amici running for office of governor? The answer is no. Well, he well, may not, not, he may, uh, he may not be not, physically running, but not, he, he could have interest. Is it not over the soul of... Uh, he would definitely have interest. Who yes. exactly is... There is no is. politician will not, that, that is from Rivers mm. that will not have interest <clears throat> in who becomes governor of Rivers State. Yes. Who suffered enough. People have suffered enough that he cannot be have interest in who becomes governor of Rivers State. Are we happy with the state of things? There's no single politician in Rivers State, including those who are in the PDP. It's just that they don't have a, an option there. They don't have a, an opening in the PDP. What you're seeing now is the fact that in the PDP, the door is shut against everybody. They've shut every leakage, every door. They have only one pipeline, which is the governor himself. That's why you are not seeing rumblings there. Nobody's going there. Now, the only opening op left for the people is the APC. And that's why the forces are playing out. The people are clear. Everybody is clear that the government of Governor Yes Onwike is gone. The only platform today that has viability and vitality to succeed the government in the university is the APC. What, what makes, How, what yeah, makes what the exactly. APC that unique, mm -hmm. that, that you, see is, you see it as the only option for, for the right people now of in River Rivers. State? Three important reasons. Right. Clearly, they have alternative policies and programs that are superior to what Governor Yeso and his team has offered in the past three years and six months. The people identifies with that. Sometimes they draw inspiration from the performance of our immediate past governor, Governor Chubikoro Timi Amechi, in, in the things he did in the area of security, in healthcare, in education, in agriculture, in creating employment. And these are the same areas where Governor Yesu Wike failed flat. Every day, he gets one person or the other to commission projects already executed by Governor Chubikoro Timi Amechi without executing his own. <laughs> Not one. I challenge him over and over again. And all they were able to show me is a 300 meters road. I didn't say 300 kilometers. 300 meters road as their star project. The other thing is the Kekena Pep, which he called Pleasure Park. Those are his star projects. For every resource he has gotten and managed, all that he could show as his star projects are a 300 meters road and uh, a Kekena Pep, what he calls Pleasure Park. Rivers will can't understand that. So exactly you know, what... the seat has a limit mm -hmm. and literally has a time. And, of course, he has run out of, out of, out of his chances. All right, you, you have said that uh, the world will find out exactly uh, what would be your next project uh, by August. I said but very next, soon, very not soon. exceeding August. Oh, not exceeding August. Okay, fine. If, if you were to go for uh, the governorship of River State, exactly what will you bring to bear that Wike is not doing right now? Number one, I will tackle insecurity. If I were to put myself forward for the office of government, mm -hmm. I would give a guarantee that in six months, nobody will talk about insecurity in River State. But are you able to actually say this is the reason why River State is so insecure? In order for you I've to be able so to solve that problem, because you have again. to know exactly what the root of the problem is <clears throat> to I've solve said it. that over and over again. What is at the core? The root, or what is at the core, is that Governor Yes Onwike is hand in gloves with the criminals. And so has lost the courage, the moral courage, to we, address the issue. All right, we'll, we'll take that as your opinion. But the point there is that the River State has always had challenges of security, even before, Long before governor we came, came, on came, board, into, yeah. came mm. into power as the governor. Yeah, now let, look at the difference. Mm. Before, right on the Mutual Credit Management, I became governor of River State in 2007, 2007, we had insecurity. And in six months, he was able to arrest it. How did he do it? It's not about miracle. Mm -hmm. It's about putting your thinking cap on, having the courage to confront it, and making it a priority issue. That's what he did. He invested in intelligence, worked with the communities, mm -hmm. invested in hardware, worked with the security agencies, and showed the moral courage 
to confront insecurity, and he got the desired result. Reverse State became stable. We were no longer raising our hands up to work on the streets of Port Harcourt. And everybody admitted that if there's one area he did very well, it's in tackling insecurity. And that's a template you hope to um, put in place? I, in fact, I would, have improved, I, I would improve on that template. Mm. My exposure in Nimasa is an advantage. And so that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is that Nyeso Mwike, as governor of the university, has not been able to create one single job. Really? Not one single job. Firms have left the university in droves. Why are they leaving the university in droves? You can attribute to insecurity. Very true. But beyond insecurity. The, the, the environment is not supportive of businesses striving. Is it multiple taxation? Is it harassment by non-state actors <clears throat> encouraged by the party in government in River State? Can that be linked to the over-politicization of governance? In Very such a true. Way? They, they, they politicized development, not governance. Yes, governance is an element. It's a driver of development. Without a doubt, without a shred of doubt, Governor Wiki has totally politicized development. The development doesn't matter. It's not on the plate for him. The only thing that is on the plate is politics. Politics, politics. And politics driven by self-interest. Instead of putting the interest of River State uh, at the front one of, of, of the discourse. And it's Governor, not a priority. And Governor Wike has been saying, look, what happened in Ekiti will not happen here in River State. Um, the, talking, the about, talking, about, themselves in Ekiti, talking about the outcome of the And the people of Ekiti, will not express themselves. Well, he, he is saying... In re-echoing what the observers are saying about the, the outcome of the AKT poll, that uh, it did not meet international um, standards, according to the I've observers. I've read two reports yeah. issued by observers. Mm -hmm. One, I hear it's been disowned as a fake report. I don't want to comment on that. I've read the second report. Most observers believe that at least the elections were relatively free and fair. And that the issue is that they had issue of vote buying by both parties. I think that's the only, that, that seems to be the dark spot. And INEC has said, we are going to tackle the issue of vote buying. The security agencies uh, have also said, we're going to be on top of our game in subsequent elections. Mm. Whether the people express their will, it's clear that the people of Ekiti express their will and their position is that the likes of Governor uh, Fayoshe and Wiki have no place in our various government houses. All right. As, as we round off now, uh, let me ask you this last question from your, your home state. Taking it from the mind or the view or the eyes of the average person in River State, forget about politics and all of that. What do you think the average person in River State really what? wants now when it comes to priority? Now, the average person in River State, from empirical studies, mm -hmm from observations, from interactions, we want three key things. The first one, he wants a sense of safety and security. He wants to sleep in his house with both eyes closed. He wants to walk on the streets of Port Harcourt, Abonima, Buguma, Bodo, Bori, Eberiomoma, Ekpei land in Ahuda, in Akinima. In any of those communities, feeling safe and secure, that he's not going to be kidnapped, he's not going to be attacked. And so, number one priority for the average reverse man is security. Number two is that the economy of the state is dead. The average reverse man wants an opportunity to work and earn a living, either to carry on with his business, go ahead and use his skill and make money, find an opportunity mm -hmm. to express himself and feel fulfilled. That's his greatest challenge. Today, he's been denied that opportunity. The firms are leaving the state in droves. He can't set up his small business, his micro business, and earn a living. He's either being attacked by um, talks loyal mm -hmm. to the governor, mm -hmm. who believes that the governor can do nothing to them because he has used them at some point to win elections, or that the government itself is just piling taxes upon taxes upon them, harassing them. Okay, we're about to wrap. What is the third one? The, now, the third one is that the average reverse man expects that there is minimal level of social services he's entitled to, quality education, health care. Mm -hmm. 
Aside from the schools built by Governor Chukwuemeka Timamechi, nobody has built one school. If you ask the governor, he will point to renovation of two or three schools, renovation of structures, old structures, in the 21st century. Not one health center or one hospital has been built. The best the governor can lay claim to is renovation of one or two hospitals, not entire hospital, one or two buildings. All right. And so the reverse man has been denied the basic social services he's used to. Today, we are forced to go to pri the few private schools that their prices are exorbitant or school fees are exorbitant, which the average reverse man can't afford. All right, you don't in terms of health care, our people are dying in their numbers. Now, what of the issue of the environment? Mm -hmm. you, I'm sure you are aware of the issue of the, 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 suit, the occurrence of suits in mm -hmm. your state. Mm -hmm. And for which the government is That too nothing. has been politicized, unfortunately. But Dr. Dakuku Peter said we'll have to leave it there. Uh, DG of uh, Nemasa, thank you so much. That's the Nigeria Maritime Safety uh, Agency uh, for talking to us this morning. Hope to see you again uh, sometime soon. Hopefully we will uh, uh, get to hear from the people at the helm of affairs in River State to find out if these things truly are true. Exactly. <laughs>